First time I met Tom um, was actually my freshman year of high school. I told him that a whole bunch of people wanted to beat him up. Hey man, some guys want to beat you up. Thank, <laughs> thanks for telling me. Cool, and now I'm scared. Tucker and I started playing music together our senior year of high school for the last probably half of a year and didn't really know what we were doing. Neither of us knew what we were doing. You know, I didn't start playing drums until I was 18. He didn't start playing guitar until he was like 17 and all he knew was Nirvana Come As You Are on his black rock axe. And we were definitely trying to be a hardcore band that wrote fast music, coupled with this ink and daggery kind of, you know, sloshy feel, um, with visions of Hot Water Music sing-alongs, you know, but it just being the two of us. Jeff and I met freshman year in college um, through a mutual friend. Didn't really talk about much of anything. I remember he actually didn't like me at the time. I think most of my motivation for wanting to be in a band with him was that I really liked him. And I just wanted to have some excuse to hang out with him a lot. We both ended up at the same Ink and Dagger show at um, the Melody Bar in New Brunswick. The first real conversation we ever had was making fun of mosh moves, like just sort of talking about windmills and how uh, sort of absurd moshing was to both of us. And um, then we got on to how much we both loved Ink and Dagger and, and all these other bands that, you know, we both grew up in our own versions of the same New Jersey punk scene, hardcore scene in high school, and um, a lot of the bands actually, you know, we liked a lot of the same bands. And he mentioned that he had tried to get a band together a bunch of times and it wasn't really working and that he had a few songs, and I said, like, well, next time we're around, like, the next time I'm around you, you know, you should play me some of those songs, and I was like, I really dig those songs, but I don't really know how to play anything, you know, <laughs> so uh, I don't know, but I'm really good at convincing other people that they should do stuff with me. So maybe I can convince other people to be in a band with us and I can like sing or something. And uh, that was how we started and I met, I met Tim and Tom was in art school with Tim. We had, were acquaintances and then uh, he approached me one time because he found out I played bass and we started talking about music and he started naming all these bands. I had like, you know, really not much, you know, um, knowledge in the way of what he was into, you know, but I was, you know, totally indie rock kid, you know, My Bloody Valentine and all these other bands. So I was like, oh, uh, I can't really, you know, be in a band right now or whatever. And then um, I ran into Jeff at a show down in Asbury Park. And uh, I had never met him before. And I was at the, fr at the show with a mutual friend. And he came over to me and my friend and he was like, oh, you play bass, right? And I was like, you should be in this band that I'm doing. And he was like, I think I'm going to be in a band with this kid, Tom, thinking that that was a good excuse because he didn't want to be in either band. And I was like, that's great. That's my band. And he was like, ah, oh, I could see he was just like, why? I guess I kind of have to at this point. You know? I can't really <laughs> avoid it, you know. So it was just this really random uh, coincidence that kind of dragged me into the band. Jeff was kind of like the mastermind of all these things. Like he could play guitar a little bit, but he had these great, ridiculously great ideas. We were all pretty green. We really didn't know what we were doing. So like all my friends were like real musicians and I'd get up there and they'd be like, oh, he can't sing at all. Like tone Jeff, man, he can't even hear the notes. And we'd record, we recorded at Big Blue, the same place that we recorded uh, Thursday stuff later on. 
and they just feel like, oh, you know, like, what are we going to do? We can't get him in key. We can't even get him, like, so, like, we just got to make him feel good, and maybe he'll accidentally do something that kind of works, even though it's terrible. He was in this band. He's 15. He showed up in this band called Useless, and boy, if there was ever a proper title for a fucking band, that was it. Yeah, and so Tone Jeff has followed me, and the thing is, like, I'm not Tone Jeff anymore. But like everybody knew it was so okay to just be like, yeah, Jeff's toned up. He was Sal's assistant. Yeah. He was Sal's PA or something, kind of. I was living on St. Mark's and I'd take the path in and he'd pick me up at the pass station in Hoboken. Do you remember, dude, we used to send, do you remember we used to, after he learned how to drive. You remember we used to send him to the post office and he would come back like four hours later? I know. He'd get lost. Always. We'd send him to the post Always. office and he would get, he'd get fucking lost. Every day. And it's the amazing. same one, same <laughs> post office. Absolutely. It took a lot to, to feel like what we were doing was a good thing. Essentially, one summer I went to North Carolina and figured out how to write what I thought was a song, like for real, like front to back. Instead of just playing parts, I actually tried to write a song. And uh, it was the Side of Brightness. All we wanted to do as a band at first was to write songs so we can play in Jeff's basement. Because Jeff had every band through his basement at the drive-in, Hot Water Music, Ink and Dagger, Saves the Day, just any band you can think of through his New Brunswick basement. I kind of didn't really have a vision for Thursday when we started. Tom had some cool songs, and one of them, This Side of Brightness, from our first, ended up on our first record. It shocked me that it turned out so great. Jeff had a little bit of a, um, a skill in, in uh, arranging songs. And uh, so with Tucker and I just sort of stumbling through things, and he sort of stumbling through arranging, we came up with a couple of other songs. The way that we would pick our songs was the ones that when we finished, we like had to like high five each other and get psyched on because we couldn't believe that an, un you know, an untalented group of kids like us were actually like writing something that cool. And we started realizing that the bonds between the songs weren't as much stylistic as each of them gave us this like really, this great feeling and that ran through the songs. And it was a little confusing to not really have a stylistic niche, you know? So, um, we just decided to record them when we had four that we thought were killer. I remember making tapes, and I remember taking the, the ins inside out of the tape, which was blank, we made a bunch of blank sheets, and I remember I wrote Thursday on it, you know, and that was the cover of the tape.
darkness drag on Just the lights which in the hall Maybe the x-ray screen Keeps it from getting dark The ball burns out if it gets too hot Keep crushing this car Over, over Keep crushing this car in this car. I guess we were lucky in a lot of ways that I was a person who put on a lot of shows and people were willing to like listen to four songs that didn't necessarily make a band and be like, that's cool, you guys are decent, you know, you should play some shows, you should play with us next show you do. I don't remember a lot about our first show. I remember playing on All Borrowed Gear and I remember we played, we played with Joshua, a band jo called Joshua, and I remember thinking like, wow. Joshua's huge, this show's gonna be great, like, they're a real band, we get to play with a real band. I just remember there was probably 15 or 20 people there, but it was Jeff's basement and we were so stoked, you know? I just remember being happy and before the show, just that adrenaline kicking in and the nerves and you're like, oh my God, I forget the song. Like, I'm in the middle of counting off a four count and I don't know what I'm gonna play next. One, two, three, four. <laughs> I wonder if I can even remember our first show because I was so nervous. Because I had like, I had all these friends who were, you know, gonna be there and gonna see my band play and like, I had found a spot where I was comfortable in the scene and now I was about to shake it up by either being in a terrible band that they could all laugh at now, you know, I was doing something that wasn't just bulletproof, kind of like, if you do shows that are mostly for free or like for bands touring, like, you're just a good guy, you know? Like, there's nothing, there's nothing like putting something out there and then being like, oh, he's a good guy, but he's in a bad band, you know? And that was my big fear. And, uh, and so that day, I just remember I tried to keep myself so busy. <laughs> Thursday, this is our first show. Um, so you're, it's really our first, it's the first time, it's the first time we played a full set. So, uh, so this is our first show, and uh, and this is Frank here from Unsound, in case you guys recognize him from before. He's filling in because we, we don't have a regular lead guitar player, so if any of y'all play lead guitar, and uh, you know, you know who to talk to. But uh, anyway, yeah, so. And I happened to go to one of those shows to see you and I. And um, I was totally surprised to find that some guys that I had been friends with that I hadn't seen in a couple of years um, were in a band that was playing at that show. And I was even more surprised to find that they're actually pretty good. Uh, and then they said at that show they needed another guitar player. So I talked to Tom about it. Gabe from Midtown said, dude, do you care if I give one of these tapes? To Alex from Eyeball, because he should put it out. And he's like, dude, you gotta, you gotta hear this band. And I was like, what? What's it called? It's called Thursday. I was like, that name sucks. What is that name all about? So um, he had a, a demo tape. And funny enough, the next day, a girl I was dating at the time named Lisa, who was from that neighborhood too, said the same thing. I got this tape. You gotta hear this band, this, this demo. At that point, like uh, that's when I was like. Well, maybe we have something that's kind of different. Maybe, maybe this this meshing of this these styles will create something cool, and other people will hear it and like it. From there, I was like, "Mom, I think I need to not do college anymore." And she was like, "You're crazy." 
And I was like, I know. She's like, well, you know, do what you got to do, you know? When I first heard it, I thought it was amazing. I never heard anything like it before. Nobody was doing that before. I mean, there was bands, local bands, that were doing like a singing and screaming thing, and uh, but nobody did it the way they did. You know, it was really aggressive, and it was, you know, at times trying, you know, this like pseudo-violent situations that they would try to bring in. Um, I don't want to name any bands, but I always was kind of turned off by it. I was, I was impressed with the fact that someone could sing and scream well, but Jeff didn't really sing all that well or scream all that well, as far as I felt. But what I did feel was, this is something I've never heard before, but this is somebody who's really saying these lyrics and, 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 and singing and screaming because this is the way he feels. When I met Alex, we met in a Burger King parking lot. We sat on the hood of my, uh, my car for, God, like five hours. And Alex totally intimidated me, like really, really intimidated me because he's really loud and expressive and <clears throat> But I really liked him. And we talked about everything. I mean, I was, I was saying things to him that I would never even tell you know, my brother. I didn't know anything about his label, really. I don't think I had any records that he had ever put out. But I just had the sense that I should probably have something to do with him, you know? And so I told the rest of the guys, like, he's awesome. I mean, also, like, he's the only person that was interested at all. So that. You know, that made it easier for sure to convince the rest of the guys that we should do a record with him. So I took advantage of the fact that I could put out a full length with my new favorite band. They had a lot of really solid ideas for almost all the songs that appear on Waiting before the time that I joined the band. And we would just spend hours and hours up in Tucker's mom's attic. I remember with being really impressed with as little as Tom knew technically about playing guitar at the time and just teaching himself. He had just like a completely innate knack for putting together ideas out of his head that like you would think would only be able to be transported from your brain to a guitar by somebody much more experienced. was the first thing that was ever mixed on this desk. Yeah. I, I never once thought that doing a full length with them would be would be uh, something that they wouldn't pull off well. I was terrified that I would ruin it. It takes a lot of patience. A lot of patience. I kind of just guide them through and you're like, oh, that's what you're trying to do. Well, okay. That's not exactly how it's done, you know? And it's just more technical aspects of what's going on and and trying to, you know, put stuff together for him. While they were recording the record, I was there on and off, but not really. I tried to stay away as much as possible, but also I, my curiosity and my, my love for the band and the people, like, kept me coming back in. So when I heard it in mastering, I finally kind of figured out what you liked. No. Yeah. Because that was really my first time to hear it. And so then I heard it, of course, then it was too late to save it, but anyways. <laughs> um, but in any event, we did master it <laughs> and delivered it to yeah, Eyeball. It's a good record. It is I a like good record. That record. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, it's very raw sounding, but it it's is. but it's cool. <laughs> I think more than anything, we were just excited that like maybe this is like the first legitimate CD we could put out, um, regardless of whether or not people like it. We liked it, and that's all that mattered. Holy crap, we have a CD! And I remember going home and you know doing like I did when I was a kid, when I would get a new CD and like you know sit on my bed and put it on and read the lyrics and like all this stuff. And it was just like at that point, it was very much like a. Um, a defining moment. The idea of having a record uh, that we recorded and it was on, on a label, like Eyeball Records put out our record and we had a poster in a music store, some indie store in New York I saw, um, was 
really overwhelming. I think it really kind of put me in a place where I could focus my energy. I mean, when Waiting came out, it still wasn't that you would form your opinion and put it on the message board. So it was, like, popular opinion wasn't easy to gauge necessarily at the time. You know, it was really like, everybody kind of had their own opinion of it. Five people would see us at this show. Five people would see us at another show. Somebody would pick up the record because one of their friends said that we were okay. You know, and so there wasn't really like a response. There were a thousand responses, you know. Actually, there weren't a thousand responses. There were 500 responses or something. We all sing songs I was in Savannah for nine months doing school. I think, I think Steve filled in for me. I knew he was a good dude because I knew his brother Joey and all of Joey's friends and they were all, till this day, are some of our best friends. So we were like, hey man, let's, do you wanna come try and play? And he had heard some of the demos and I, and I believe he heard some awaiting and he was, he was a fan. I knew my brother played me the demo, and I didn't like it at first. I don't know how big of a fan, but he was definitely a fan. I, I hope he knows that I said. 